Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and Other Home Energies. Well, I went ahead and made a few parts here. I've already, you've already seen how to make a loop. If you try it real good, you can come up with uh, ones that look about like that. I did two loops on the ends of these. These are going to be the linkage. Don't know where I'm going to cut it yet. I'll do this as I go. Uh, next thing we're going to do, first you need to put one on here. And then we need to clip it. And then... I've taken some pen filling out of one of these pens after the ink is gone and I've chopped a few pieces up. This is going to help out a lot. Uh, when this piece goes on here, I'll slide a piece of this on the end here and put a dot of super glue. And this won't come off unless you take that off. These are going to be bearings. They spin pretty good. And they're also going to be stops that hold everything in. Work real great. And they're quiet. They don't make as much noise as regular metal to metal slapping. These will be riding on the, on the cam or on the crank with one of those on each side of it. And that keeps it in line. So I guess the first thing is just go ahead and do one. This one I'm going to leave for the long one. do that. Well, I figure we're probably going to need about that much of this one. Put a little kink to it. Grab it. Snap it. Done. Stick this one on. We don't have to make any measurements yet. That's a good thing. Put this on there. Kind of hard to see. Got the light on the wrong side tonight. I've been rebuilding carburetors all day. Anyway, there we go. And that'll keep that from coming off. One drop of super glue. There we go. Stuff bonds quick. Okay, I want to move this out of the way. One drop in the very end of it. And it'll suck up, soak up in there. I'll leave that out just a little bit. I'm going to let that dry before I do anything else with it. I always do this with the end afterward. I want no glue down here on the sides. Then when I put my cap on, I don't. I usually don't have one of these dry up for a long time. It's been a few minutes now. We'll see. We got this all nice and free. This is dry. Plus I trimmed this edge off here with the razor blade in small little slivers, just a few little chunks at a time. Now we're going to have to keep the water out of here. I want water to come in here and cool this off, or dry, be able to drop a few pieces of ice. This is one of those little plastic test tubes. I cut a piece of it off. And this is the edge that uh, is original. We'll stick that down. I took sandpaper and I took regular plumbing sandpaper and I roughed up all the spot down here where it's going to go and I cleaned up with alcohol. And I want this to point. Well, I got you in the shadow here. I want this to point towards my piston here. I played around with it and found that that's the best way that it flows inside there. And I'll put that piece right down there. And I'm going to super glue it. And I'm going to put a drop all the way around this edge. I'm not trying to get it up very high anywhere. Just enough to put a nice bead all the way around. See a little drop come out the end. I'll dab it and drag it. And that ought to do it for that. Get my super glue to stand up over here. There we go. I don't want to get this all over that joint. But I do want it to have clearance. That'll work right where it's at. So hold that down and we'll be right back. Many good things to you and yours. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and Other Home Energies. We've got this dry and I went ahead and put another drop around the bottom uh, to help it seal real good. Now we've got this part here. Uh, the end of this isn't cut exactly straight, but that's okay. The bottom of the can isn't straight. I have turned this around this way and this way and measured it both ways to make sure it stands up straight. And this is the way. So without leaning this up so super glue goes in it, 
I'm going to put a little on the outside edge all the way around just watch a drop come out the end and spread it that's the way to get it I look back where I had it and I'm going to put it right back down make sure I've got it situated the right way that's the way right there and I'll put another drop around the bottom and it'll follow the wet stuff and help it have a nice seal you could epoxy it if it breaks loose I will but I'm interested in getting this one going and you can always put the uh, Permatex sealer uh, I think she's standing up on her own always wipe the end keep it standing up I'm watching through the camera I've had a few bad shots trying to do this stuff and have to go back and do it I usually use my needle nose open or an extra pair and it keeps the bottle straight up you don't have a problem okay that looks like it's doing pretty well let's move this out of the way I've got some coat hanger here it's about 13 inches long both pieces they don't have to be perfect straight see how they're kind of wobbly just find your middle you can do that by balance when you find your middle you can take the other piece and you want to bend this one around it you're going to go one and a half turns and you want to keep this bend kind of tight so you put all your pressure as close to the joint as possible or to where you're bending it around you're going to notice I got some uh, flakes here breaking off of paint that's all right all that paint doesn't matter all right I'll get these to pass each other these do not have to be wonderful perfect and all that kind of stuff and it doesn't matter if you find the exact center to start on there we go back down to the bottom you should have something and I'll get the magnifying glass for you here in a second well, it's not quite coming out the way I wanted it to. It's all right, that's what other pairs of pliers are for. Put the pressure right where the high spot is. Bring it on down. Squeeze it this way, any way you can. And I'm going to make the other piece off camera is to make it a little nicer. It's kind of hard working with a camera right in front of me. I think I messed that one up. I'll have to open it up a bit. The only thing you really want to worry about is if this is going to spin and not bind it. There we go. There we go. All right. And I need to do the same thing with this other one. There we go. It's going to spin, especially once I get the paint off it. I'll make another one, and I'll be right back. Now, when I'm looking at this, I see it's kind of binding when I'm trying to twist here. you got to sit there and make sure it's going to spin when it's straight in the direction that you want it to go. So you get all your bends done first, and then we'll come down here and clip these off even and put a 90-degree bend on the bottom. And that will go into the edges over here and be glued down there and then glued up against the sides of these and that'll make it very strong and you'll do one for the other side and then we'll bend our crank and put that in but we're not going to glue the second one in yet the crank is bent and you're going to have to thread it through this hole which means it's going to you're going to have to play around with it and get it in then when you finally got it in then you can glue this stuff in set it all up first and then we put the linkage on and we'll fire this thing up for you